An object zooming through our solar system is challenging notions of scientists and sparking heated debate. The alert went out just days ago from the SOHO spacecraft. A new object designated Swan 25B had appeared. At first, it was just a faint glow, but then it started to grow and grow. Now astronomers are realizing this is no ordinary comet. It's a giant 100 times bigger than other interstellar objects that have recently made headlines, and it's getting brighter with every passing hour. It has emerged from the sun's glare on a trajectory that will bring it terrifyingly close to Earth's path, and scientists have no idea what will happen when it gets here. A behemoth awakens. On September 11, 2025, an amateur astronomer named Vladimir Bazugli was doing what he always does. Carefully looking over the latest public data from the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO, a spacecraft that has been staring at the sun for decades. He was scanning images from an instrument called SWAN, which is designed to look for hydrogen atoms flowing into the solar system. But on this day, he saw something that made his blood run cold, a faint, fuzzy glow where nothing should be. It was a new comet. At first, it was a moment of excitement, the kind that every sky watcher dreams of, but that excitement quickly turned to unease. You see, this wasn't a normal discovery. Comets are usually found years out, faint specks in the distant frozen edges of the solar system. This one, designated C2025R2, or SWAN 25B, was already deep inside the solar system, and it had emerged from the one place we can't easily look, the blinding glare of the sun. It was like a submarine surfacing right next to a battleship. The initial report sent a shockwave through the astronomical community. The object was brightening at a rate that was, to put it mildly, alarming. Comets get brighter as they get closer to the sun and their ice begins to vaporize, forming a glowing coma and tail. But Swan 25b was brightening far faster than any typical comet. This suggested two terrifying possibilities. Either it was made of some incredibly volatile, unknown material, or it was absolutely gigantic. As more observatories around the world turned their telescopes toward this new ghost, the second possibility started to look like a certainty. Early estimates of its nucleus, the solid body at its heart, were staggering. The numbers suggested a diameter of at least 10 miles. To give you some perspective, the recent Interstellar Visitor 3i Atlas, which caused its own stir, was estimated to be about 7 miles wide. But what many overlooked is that a small increase in diameter means a massive increase in volume and mass. A 10-mile object isn't just a bit bigger, it is more than 100 times bigger in sheer volume and destructive potential. It's the difference between a cannonball and a wrecking ball. This wasn't just another comet, it was a true behemoth, a planet-altering sized object that had somehow snuck up on us. Its trajectory was even more concerning. It was on a path that would bring it screaming toward the inner solar system at over 100,000 miles per hour. The calculations showed it would cross Earth's own orbital path on October 5, 2025. While a direct impact was thankfully not in the cards, an object this large crossing our path is the cosmic equivalent of a freight train blowing through a red light just as you approach the intersection. The thing nobody tells you is that a comet this big doesn't have to hit us to cause problems. It drags a vast trail of dust and debris behind it. If Earth were to pass through that trail, it could trigger a meteor storm of unprecedented intensity with thousands of shooting stars per hour, some potentially large enough to survive entry and hit the ground. For weeks, the comet is expected to be visible to the naked eye, its tail stretching across the sky. But its sudden appearance and enormous size have left scientists with more questions than answers. Where did it come from? What is it made of? And why didn't we see it coming? This is a mystery that has scientists deeply worried. Modeling a monster. For weeks after its discovery, scientists could only guess at the true power of SWAN 25B. But in the modern world, we no longer have to guess. At NASA's Ames Research Center in California, there is a machine that can look into the future. It's not a crystal ball, it's one of the most powerful supercomputers on Earth, a beast of a machine called Pleiades. Its job is to solve problems that are too complex for the human mind, from modeling the inside of a black hole to simulating the airflow over a new spacecraft. So a team at NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office gave Pleiades a new terrifying task, simulate what would happen if the unthinkable occurred. What if SWAN 25B's orbit was just slightly different? What if it was on a direct collision course with Earth? 
They created the most detailed simulation of a large-scale comet impact ever attempted. They fed the computer all the known data, an object 10 miles wide made of a mix of ice and rock hitting the atmosphere at a blistering 100,000 miles per hour over a densely populated region in Asia. They used their most advanced software, the Probabilistic Asteroid Impact Risk, or PAIR model, to build a digital twin of the event. The scientists expected to see a simulation of horrific continental-scale destruction. And they did. The computer showed an impact that would release the energy of 1,000 megatons of TNT. That's more than 60 times the Tunguska event. To put it another way, it's like every nuclear weapon on Earth going off in the same place at the same time. The initial impact in the simulation vaporized the comet and a huge chunk of Earth's crust instantly, excavating a crater over 60 miles wide. The thermal pulse, a wave of pure heat, ignited fires across an area the size of Texas. A devastating shockwave, moving faster than the speed of sound, flattened everything for hundreds of miles. But what many overlooked is that this was just the beginning. The simulation kept running, modeling the secondary effects on our fragile, interconnected world. What the scientists saw next revealed a critical vulnerability, a flaw not in our defenses against space rocks, but in the very fabric of our modern civilization. The simulation showed with chilling clarity that the initial impact was only the opening act of the catastrophe. The real planetary disaster was about to unfold at the speed of light. The blast was only the first domino to fall. A continent in darkness. The effect that truly sobered the NASA researchers was what the Pleiades simulation showed happening in the silent, invisible realm of the upper atmosphere. The insane energy from the 1,000 megaton explosion superheated and ionized the air, creating a massive, expanding bubble of charged particles in the ionosphere. The thing nobody tells you is that a bubble this big, created this fast, can generate a powerful localized electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. It's a phenomenon that scientists have long theorized for giant impacts, something far beyond the minor disruptions seen from smaller meteors like the one over Chelyabinsk. This was on a whole new scale. The simulation showed an EMP-like effect that would be strong enough to cripple technology across a region the size of North America or Asia. The first systems to go down in the simulation were the power grids. The pulse sent huge voltage spikes through long-distance transmission lines, causing transformers to overload and literally explode. Within minutes, a cascading power failure plunged a massive portion of the continent into total darkness. But the power grid was just the start of the chain reaction. You see, our modern world is built on a fragile web of systems that all depend on each other. The EMP and the blackout triggered a cascade of failures that spread like a virus. Satellites in the direct line of sight of the impact were hit by the wave of ionized plasma. Their sensitive electronics were fried, knocking them permanently offline. GPS signals in the region vanished instantly. Air traffic control systems went dark, leading to absolute chaos in the skies. Then the internet went down. The massive data centers and hubs that route information across the continent failed. In the simulation, stock exchanges couldn't open. Bank transactions stopped. The digital flow of money that is the lifeblood of our economy simply froze. To put it mildly, the simulation showed a regional technological collapse, a forced return to a pre-industrial age in a matter of minutes. What many people have overlooked is just how vulnerable our just-in-time supply chains are. With no communication, no GPS, and no power, the entire system broke down. Ports couldn't unload ships, trains stopped on their tracks, trucks couldn't be dispatched. The simulation showed how a modern society used to shelves that are always full would react when the food and medicine stopped coming. Widespread panic and chaos broke out in a matter of days. The simulation proved that a 10-mile-wide comet 100 times bigger than 3i Atlas didn't need to be from another star system to send a continent back to the Dark Ages. The simulation of the human response was even more disturbing. A crisis of trust. The simulation's most unsettling phase began after the technological collapse. It was no longer just about physics, it was about human psychology and politics. Using complex models informed by crisis game theory, the kind used by military strategists, the supercomputer began to predict how world leaders would react. In the absolute chaos of a continental blackout, with no reliable satellite data and all communication lines severed, world leaders were left completely blind. 
They knew a massive explosion had occurred, but for hours or even days, they would have no way of knowing for sure what caused it. Was it a natural event of unimaginable power, or was it a surprise attack with some terrifying new kind of weapon? The thing is, in a crisis where there is no information, that empty space is quickly filled by fear and suspicion. What many overlooked is that the signature of a massive impact, the seismic shock, the atmospheric pressure wave, and the electromagnetic pulse looks eerily similar on sensors to a high-altitude nuclear detonation. In the simulation, military command and control systems designed to be tough automatically went to their highest alert levels. With no clear picture of the threat, generals had to assume the worst-case scenario, that they were under attack from a rival superpower. The simulation predicted a rapid descent into a global fog of war. Nations bordering the affected region, fearing an invasion or a follow-up strike, put their militaries on the move. Accusations and threats, sent over the few remaining military channels, flew back and forth. The simulation showed a high probability of a deadly miscalculation. A border skirmish, a downed spy plane, or even a cyber attack on a rival's remaining systems could easily be misinterpreted as the first shot in a global conflict. You see, the rules that govern our world are built on a foundation of communication and being able to verify information. The simulation showed what happens when you completely remove that foundation. Trust disappears. Every action is seen through a lens of fear. The true horror in the simulation wasn't the comet, it was the reflection of ourselves. It was the sober realization that the complex systems we've built to keep us safe could, in a moment of blindness, become the very things that lead to our downfall. This is the down-to-earth truth of the matter. People watching this are looking for a mystery, wondering if all this is true. Are we missing a key detail about SWAN 25B? The thing is, this simulation isn't a prophecy. It is a fire drill for civilization. It's designed to find our blind spots before a real event does. The sobering results are a call to action driving the real-world efforts that happen in secret every day. NASA's groundbreaking DART mission in 2022 was a monumental achievement seen by the whole world. It proved, for the first time, that we could physically change an asteroid's course. We are no longer dinosaurs waiting helplessly for the sky to fall. But DART is like a sniper rifle. It works perfectly if you have one target and plenty of time to aim. What the SWAN 25B simulation made terrifyingly clear is that we also need a shotgun a way to handle threats that appear suddenly with little to no warning. That's where the next generation of planetary defense comes in. The upcoming NEO Surveyor Space Telescope, planned to launch around 2028, is a direct answer to this problem. It's an infrared telescope that will be placed in a special orbit where it can scan the solar system for threats we can't see from Earth. It will be our planet's dedicated round-the-clock sentinel, a cosmic security camera designed to find these ghosts in the dark while we still have time to react. SWAN 25B is a cosmic riddle hurtling through our solar system. Are our simulations just scary stories or are they a preview of a future we are not ready for? Let us know. Like and subscribe.